Rhythmic gymnastics is a dynamic sport that attracts your eye with its colorful ribbons, but keeps your attention with its graceful elegance and challenging combinations. Whether it's performed by an individual or competed as a group, the ancient sport of rhythmic gymnastics is moving west. The Eastern Bloc nations dominate this sport. In the group event, the world looks to Bulgaria to set the trends. They're the 1987 world champions, and for the first time in history, Bulgaria has sent its team to the USA. In the individual competition, the Soviet Union is well represented. Most recently, it has been Marina Lobac collecting perfect tens and a lot of gold. The best rhythmic gymnastics in the world coming up. It is autumn. The colorful leaves and crisp temperatures are a reminder that the academic year has begun again. As the students here at Princeton University head back to class, there's a beautiful and athletic surprise awaiting them on the other side of campus. It's gymnastics, but with a rhythmic flair. ESPN presents Rhythmic Gymnastics. From the Jadwin Gymnasium on the campus of Princeton University, it's the Konica Cup International Rhythmic Gymnastics Invitational. Today's telecast is brought to you by the Konica Corporation, leading the world in color film, cameras, videotape, and copiers. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a light. Hello everybody and welcome to the Jadwin Gymnasium, home not only to Princeton's athletics but also to the NBA's New Jersey Nets for practice purposes. But this day a very special treat is inside Jadwin Gymnasium, it is rhythmic gymnastics. I'm Leandra Riley and if you are used to seeing gymnastics on ESPN, then you're more traditionally familiar with artistic gymnastics. That's the balance beam, the uneven parallel bars, vaulting and floor exercise. Well today the women are competing in another form of the sport and they will be using hand implements like the rope the clubs, the hoop, and the ribbon. Joining me in this telecast is 1984 Rhythmic Olympic gymnast and 1984 national champion for the USA, Valerie Zimmering. And Valerie, we saw in the beginning of our telecast that the Eastern Bloc nations are very strong in this sport. How come? That's right, Leandra. They're very strong. The Eastern Bloc countries have about 100 years' experience in rhythmic gymnastics. Not only is it a national rhythmic program in their country, but the girls start at five and six years old, and it really makes a difference. In the United States, the sport is, we calculated, approximately 10, maybe 15 years old. In the Eastern Bloc countries, the sport is really about 100 years old. So there's 85 years to make up. Is it going to take us 85 years to get to the top? It doesn't look like it. Our showing in the World Championships this year was better than we've ever done before. And in 15 years, we've come a long way. It's not going to take that long. We know Marina Lobac is strong for the Soviet Union. Who for the USA is maybe one of the banner names that we should be watching for in Seoul, Korea in 88? Well, Diane Simpson is our strongest performer here. She had an excellent showing at the World Championships. We also have Irina Rubinstein and Dakin Lister. And any one of them could make our Olympic team next year. All right, we will be watching for them in this Konica Cup competition that is coming your way from Princeton, New Jersey. It's a two-day event. We'll bring you up to date after this. Welcome back to the Konica Cup. Our competition actually began yesterday with each gymnast performing with two apparatus. Therefore, we are at the midway point of our competition. Let's take a look at the very best in the world. Our next hoop competitor is our next from, competitor the Soviet is from the Union. Soviet we Union, Marina, Marina Lobach. Lobach, 17 years of age, 5 feet 4 inches tall. We always ask the gymnasts to fill out uh, biographical information on themselves. And usually under hobbies, they list things like dance or reading. Marina enjoys the theater. She's fond of nature, classical music, and of course ballet and dancing, which are always on every rhythmic gymnast's biography. Her dance background is really evident. When you watch her routine, she has so much flexibility and gorgeous feet, gorgeous toe point. And I think her theater background might be as well. She has a dramatic flair. Toss, roll, and catch. That's two elements during a toss, so it's a superior difficulty move. And look at the facial expression. It changes right with the music. Leaping through 
the hoop is also required. She just demonstrated that there. Nice foot toss. Perfect catch. She waited for the equipment a little bit, but I don't think it'd be too much of a deduction. And in a reminder, if you're just joining us for these championships, you must note that these gymnasts are not allowed to tumble. In rhythmic gymnastics, it is a deduction. All acrobatic, acrobatic moves that you'll see, we call them pre-acrobatic moves because they don't move directly through the vertical. A lot of interesting elements in Marina Lobach's routine. Next and now you're looking at another United competitor States from the United America, States, Diane Simpson. Diane Simpson. At the 1987 World Championships in Varna, she finished 22nd in the all-around, 14th in the rope event. When you saw her this year at the U.S. Olympic Festival, she finished second in the all-around competition. And there you see at the Pan American Games, first in ribbon and rope. Definitely one of the best, if not the best, rhythmic gymnasts for the United States. She's a real dramatic routine. She chooses violin for her instrument. Real hard toss here, turn, catching her back. Double turns and that you see in scales are very difficult. That's what all the ballet training is for. We can see why she took the first at the Pan American Games. Was that a mistake? Yes, yeah, she had to step back and that wasn't what she intended to do. It was noticeable, and probably one or two tenths deduction. Diane Simpson is from Evanston, Illinois, who attends Northwestern University. She is a freshman. I think Diane is a perfect rhythmic gymnast body. She's five feet six inches tall, maybe a little light at 103 pounds. But she's beautifully proportioned that her dance elements are really nice out there. Soviet we have a Soviet Tatiana gymnast coming up right now, Tatiana Druchinina, who is going to perform with the rope. And she is the lightest gymnast at 76 pounds. 76 pounds. I don't know anybody who weighs 76 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> Neither do I. I don't want to stand next to anybody who weighs 76 pounds. First accordion we've heard. A change of tempo. Change of tempo is required. She's very fast with her feet. She went from zero to 60 in about <laughs> five seconds there. She has a double turn, catch right away into a very difficult toss here. Double roll. Nice catch. Here are very difficult. She does three in a row. I 
I did not see any mistakes in that routine. Tatiana Druchinina, 18 years of age from the Soviet Union. To look now at Marina Lobach. Very unique choreography for this routine. It's really a theme. She's almost like a clown playing in the whole routine. Marina's strong point is definitely her leaps. There you see three leaps all over splits. It means over 180 degrees. Very difficult balance. Again, in a 180 degree split. You can see the expression on her face change. Double roll, perfect catch. She has another toss coming up here. And much more of a jazz flavor to her routine than some of the other Soviet performers who choose to stay more traditionally with the ballet type. Absolutely, which I think makes it interesting. Uh -huh. And she's also the only gymnast we've seen conclude her ribbon performance with the ribbon all scrunched up in her hand. And with no deduction because she meant to do that. Right, right. <laughs> Marina Lobach received a perfect score of 10 for that routine. In fact, she wound up perfect for the day with a 20 total, giving her first place. The Soviet Union is on top one, two, and three after two rotations. The best USA finisher is Diane Simpson. She currently is in six with two events remaining. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, the group event highlights. Our group competition was held yesterday in the ball and hoop event at this Konica Cup International Rhythmic Gymnastics Meet. We are now going to show you highlights from the ball and hoop team event. This is the team from Japan in the group competition. I like their leotard, it's very colorful. This is the Konica Cup competition from Princeton, New Jersey. I'm Leanne McCartney along with U.S. Rhythmic Gymnast Valerie Zimmerin. Now coach, and you're also now a student at UCLA, just about to finish up there. Hopefully one more year. The group competition is not yet part of our Olympic program, and I, when I say our, I mean the world's Olympic program. Only the individual competition will be seen in the 88 games in Seoul, Korea. But in 1992, when the Olympics are held in Barcelona, Spain, the rhythmic gymnastic governing body is very optimistic that this event will be included, the group competition. It's very exciting. It should be included. I think it brings a whole other dimension to rhythmic gymnastics that most people haven't seen. They're doing beautifully so far. Three very difficult superior parts in their routine right at the beginning. Nice toss. You can really see the formations from overhead and the formations are very important. They have to move in and out of formations throughout the routine from circles to lines, three and three pairs. Well, like the NFL, the judges are going to be asking for this overhead cam for replay so they can see formations. It does look great for Large the Large toss. Now they had a problem there because one of the girls had to move closer to get it. The area that they are working on is 40 by 40, which is the same size as an artistic gymnastic floor exercise mat. In the group routine, actually, they expand the area to 42 by 42 because there are six, six girls on the mat. There. I was just going to say, she just stepped out of bounds, but that would not count. No, they can move all the way to the dark gray area without having it be a deduction. The white tape area being the 40 by 40 area. 
two girls will come in and catch their very nice move. They almost have to have eyes in the back of their head to see where their partner is. At all times, they're checking lines, checking to see if they're in the right position. Setting up for a very difficult triple toss. One girl tosses three hoops and beautifully caught. Beautiful. Talk about pressure. Moving into a circle, that's another formation. I find this routine much more dynamic than the Soviet Union. It may not be as difficult, but it... The Soviet team tried to use a different style and I really don't think it worked out for them. They usually stick to more ballet and this time they tried to go dramatic and it just didn't work. Two girls leap through one hoop. Another very difficult movement. I like the transitions of this performance. The choreography was just beautiful. Our next group comes from Bulgaria. This group just finished winning the gold medal in the group event at the World Championships in Bulgaria. They've worked together for two years now at least. The USA, their score was just flashed. 18.55 is their total. The 955 for composition and 9.0 for execution. That puts the USA in third at this point. Unique in the beginning of this routine, they start out almost like individuals. Each girl is doing something different. They are working in a group of six, but not one girl is doing the same thing. Now we move to three and three. Difficult toss, roll, and catch. We have a foot toss coming up here. All the way across the mat. No problem with that. And again, One girl tossing three hoops. Oh, no problem. Toss. Move into another one girl tossing three hoops, two from her hand and one from her foot. Same girl is going to toss three balls. And that was in three different directions, too, she did that. Another foot toss. They're so together, so synchronized. Very difficult. Leap, hit the hoop, and no problem with the catch again. Showing flexibility. Any one of these girls could be a champion individual gymnast. Their technique is so good. That's what makes it different from the other countries. What's unusual too is, you know, again, we've used that term, the broad base of support. Bulgaria, the entire country, I think, is a population of about four million. And all the little girls do rhythmic gymnastics. And every one of them. <laughs> Very difficult toss combination coming up, about five tosses in a row. They catch one. Roll it across the mat, the other girls hit it back, and they'll repeat the same thing again. Again, moving to individual performance rather than group at the finish like they did in the beginning. Beautiful. A beautiful performance by the team from Bulgaria.
The Kanaka Cup is awarded to the country with the best individual scores and best group scores combined. So after the ball and hoop event, the standings look like this. Bulgaria is on top, Soviet Union second, Japan is third. Now the groups must perform once more to determine a champion. When we come back, we'll begin with our third rotation for the individual event. Welcome back to Princeton University and the Jadwin Gymnasium. Let's take another look at the standings. As you can see, the Soviet Union, as we told you in the beginning of our telecast, really dominates an individual competition. Lobos, Struchinina, and Kochneva, one, two, and three, with Albena Dimitrova of Bulgaria pulling up fourth. For the USA, the leader after two events for our country is Diane Simpson. She is followed by a Bulgarian athlete and then Fuzesi from Canada. So the USA right now is resting its hope on Diane Simpson. She has two events remaining and she currently is sixth in the standing. But with the three Soviets on top like that, it has to be difficult. It will be difficult, but Marina has a lot of pressure on her with two perfect tens, so we'll see if she can match up. All right, we said this may be a new sport for some of you in our viewing audience. So we have prepared for you an explanation of some of the events. Right now, let's learn about hoop and rope. In the rope event, we'll be looking for large leap and fast skipping combinations through the rope. But unlike a conventional jump rope, we'll see the gymnast release one end and even two ends of the rope in high tosses. In the hoop event, the gymnast must roll the hoop across the floor and on her body, also performing large tosses with variety of tossing and catching. Let me embellish on that a little bit, if I may. The hoop is pretty much like a standard hula hoop that we're used to seeing on, in the USA. It's made of like plastic. Some of them are made of plastic. Some girls elect to use wood, but uh, size-wise, it's like a hula hoop. And it is standard. In it other is words, standard. You can't use a small hoop or an extra large hoop. It is a standard. Right. Diameter. For all the events, there are standard. What about the rope? How long is that rope about? The rope depends on the gymnast's height. So we will see some variations in that. Yeah. Uh, so the length varies most in the rope. All right. We are ready to begin our competition. Our first gymnast, ironically, is the perfect gymnast. You are looking at Marina Lobach from the Soviet Union, the young lady who has two tens already in her first performances that we saw earlier. She is 17 years old. Marina starts off with some very unique single releases of the rope. That's where she lets go of one end and then I'll catch it again. This she quite possibly is the best rhythmic gymnast in the world right now. Potentially right here. Could be the gold medal winner in Seoul in 1988. Right now, she's leading the Soviet Union with two perfect tens. This is the ultimate of the sport. That's called an illusion when she touches the floor and her legs go through split. toss here roll and catch she had a little mistake on the catch nothing big the bronze medalist in this event from the world championship Marina Lobach she had a very clean routine. If anything, there was one small mistake near the end in this difficult turn and catch. Nothing very noticeable. Here we have the leap, roll, and catch. And this is where we had a little, little bobble there on the, on the catch. One-tenth, if anything. Marina Lobach has two perfect tens We're as we said go. going Let's into this her third now. performance and Susan that certainly Bushman. puts the pressure on you when you've been perfect so far to try to attain that status 
Our next competitor is ready to compete, and there are two panels of judges. While the rope judges are conferring, the hoop judges are now ready to watch this lady, Susan Cushman from Canada. And as soon as we see the score for Marina Lobach, we will tell you what it is. we're looking for in the hoop event. Required moves are rolls of the hoop across the body and on the floor. That's called a boomerang right there. The hoop comes back to her. The very difficult toss from her foot. She's switching the hoop constantly from her right to left hand. She does have to use both hands in her team. Facial expression, just comparing Lobach to Cushman now. You can see the presence that Lobach has as opposed to Susan Cushman right now. It takes years of experience and practice to develop that expressiveness. It's easy to get nervous in a competition and forget about it. Now she's coming to life a little bit more relaxed out there. This is obviously... Bounced on her shoulder, is that a deduction? Um, a little bit because it wasn't a clean catch. And that was Susan Cushman. She's from Winnipeg, Ontario. She's 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighs 100 pounds. We have a high toss here, catching it under a leap. It's very difficult. And her finish. Susan Cushman completing her hoop performance. When we come back, we will continue with our coverage of the 1987 Conica Cup. Stay with us here in Princeton, New Jersey. At our head judging table, let me quickly explain something about the judging here. We have two panels of judges. There are six judges on each panel. They only judge one implement. So while the next performer is going, the first panel of judges are judging, and then they flip-flop. Therefore, the scores are a little bit slow. Marina Lobach, the gymnast you saw first, she had two perfect tens going into her rope event. She received a 9.9. Her total is now 29.9. And Susan Kishman, on the hoop, received a 9.6. Right now, you're looking at the best so far for the USA. She's currently in sixth place in the standings, and she's ready now to compete with the rope. Of the six judges, the two high scores are thrown out, the two low scores are thrown out, and only the two middle scores are utilized. Like artistic gymnastics, it's scored on a scale of 1 to 10. This was Diane's strongest routine at the World Championships. And that was a problem. Yes, that was a one-tenth problem. She wanted to catch it under her foot and she didn't quite do it. Does it make a difference if your mistake is on a simple or basic move as opposed to making a mistake on a superior move? Do the judges take that into consideration? What really matters is how quickly you recover from the mistake. If it's very quickly, it could be only one-tenth even for a drop of the apparatus. Anytime it takes you two or three seconds to get back together, then that's three or four tenths deduction. Difficult chest roll. Oh, that looks good. Good catch. Crowd like that. Now her rope is black, and that looked very difficult to even see, those tosses where she was spinning around and having to catch the ends. She didn't have any trouble with that. I think, really, that one small mistake about a tenth, the rest of her team was excellent. She looks European. She does. She has a very European style. It's a very difficult element. She does a chest roll, and looks up, catches it, and grabs it on her leg. No problem with that. 
It's like she's done it a thousand times, and I bet she has, at least. <laughs> we have another competitor from the USA, Dakin Lister. Dakin Lister was born in Oklahoma City, currently resides in the Chicago area. Her coach is Arena Vidovich. She's one of the strongest American coaches. The most unique thing about Dakin's hoop routine is the choreography. It's very dramatic. You can see it in her facial expression. And they must cover the entire 40 by 40 area. Very dramatic. Chest toss and a good catch. And it's easy to see why Dakin Lister says that the hoop is her favorite apparatus. Seven years she's been in the sport and her experience shows. This is some of the creative choreography that I was talking about. She has the hoop on her neck and does what we call a pre-acrobatic element because she doesn't move over the vertical, which is not allowed in rhythmic. We call it pre-acrobatic. Tumbling is not allowed in case you were wondering why we're not seeing the round off flip flops and backhand springs. Choreography and originality are more important in this event. To bring you up to date on the scores, we do have, as this aspiring gymnast looks, looks on, we do have the score for Diane Simpson. She received a 9.75 for her rope routine, bringing her up to 29.1. She was in sixth place in the standings after two rotations. That will not help her that much, as Marina Lobach has a 29.9. Eight tenths of a point separate first and sixth place right now. This is Mary Fusesi. She is from Canada, 13 years of age. She is the youngest gymnast in this competition. And we've just been given Dakin Lister's score. She received a 9.6. for leaping series through the ropes, skips and leaps. It should be throughout the whole routine, not just in one part of the routine. The skips should be different places from the beginning to the end. Should toss with two leaps, a required move. Because she did two leaps while that was in the air, that's a superior move. for the fact that she didn't catch the ends. And that's important. That's something you learn from experience. Don't let anybody know when you make a mistake. And she's just 13. A lot of composure for such a young lady. A lovely routine by Mary Fusesi. And we will be back with more of the 1987 Konica Cup. But first, this. Welcome back to the Jadwin Gymnasium. I'm Leandra Riley along with Valerie Zimmering, a 1984 Rhythmic Gymnastic Olympian for the United States. Valerie, how has the sport changed from when you were in it in 84, which I realize was just a few years ago, to today even? The elements every year just keep getting more and more difficult. The girls are required to do three moves now instead of just two underneath the high tosses. Now we are looking at Anna Kochneva from the Soviet Union. 
And this truly is her banner event, as you saw from our graphic there. She is the world champion gold medalist for this implement. She has a lot of work with her feet here. There, right away wow. is an example. Very difficult. Wow. That was, that was good. Perfect control. Mary Fusese received a 9.60. She has a boomerang move coming up. It's very exciting. Showing flexibility there. All the Soviet and Bulgarian gymnasts have so much flexibility. They've worked on it for so long. It's almost as if this hoop is attached to her. It's just part of her body. That is the ideal. That's what everyone's trying to accomplish here. Oh, is that beautiful? This sport is truly a still photographer's delight because these gymnasts just keep passing from this one This is that boomerang move I was talking about. Uh -huh. Catching uh -huh. it behind. She did not yes. see where that was. She had to feel that. That's right. When they take their eyes off it, it is blind. They have to hope the apparatus comes back. Catching on her neck. Perfect routine. Uh -huh. Beautiful, beautiful performance. Anna Kochneva. When you were talking about she always had control of that hoop and knew exactly where it was, this is a good demonstration of that. Look at that. Moving up and down her body. Very difficult to control the hoop like that. Anna Kochneva, 17 years of age. And her hometown is Moscow. Now we are ready to see a young lady compete with the rope apparatus from Bulgaria, Julia Monjevia. I believe Julia is the tallest gymnast at 5 feet 7 inches. Although for rhythmic gymnastics, that's not really tall. They average between 5'2 and 5'7. Really a different body type than you see in artistic gymnastics. More of a dancer's body. She's using interesting accompaniment here. This is tambourine. The gymnast can choose any one instrument for accompaniment. Of all the implements, rope lends itself to the variety. It does because of the rhythm of the jumping, the skips and the jumps. This is an interesting helicopter move here when she holds the center of the rope and lets the end spin. Difficult single releases there. And her three leap required series. Very nice routine. And the crowd seemed to enjoy the departure from the traditional piano and guitar accompaniment. She had a very difficult toss right at the finish of her routine. That's called an illusion right into a roll. No problem with the catch. I would love to see a live tambourine accompanying a gymnast on the floor. When we come back, we will continue with our coverage of the Konica Cup. We still have ribbon and clubs. Stay with us. We are continuing with our coverage of rhythmic gymnastics here at the Jadwin Gymnasium to bring you up to date on some scores. Anna Kochneva received a 9.95. The significance of that is she was four tenths of a point behind the leader, Marina Lobach, going into this rotation. She is now .35, so she's closed the gap ever so slightly. 
Julia Mungeva, the lady you saw just before we went to break, received a 9.85 for her routine with the rope. And now we are ready for our next competitor. And she is from the Soviet Union. After two rotations, she is currently in, I'm sorry, from Japan, rather. She is Kaori Ishima. Kaori Ishima has an 18.65 total, one of the stronger gymnasts from Japan. In the overall standing, she is 14th. lady was the Four Continents Junior Champion in the All-Around. But she's not with the juniors anymore. She's with the big girls. It's very scary to move from the junior competition into the senior event. But the girls are getting younger and younger into international competition. leap series three leaps in a row with no step in between that's a required move passing through the rope again a reminder about the scoring we do have two panels of judges one for rope one for poop Right now, the hoop judges are tallying their last score while we're watching this rope performance, which is why we cannot give you the scores immediately after each competitor. The judges have a good two or three minutes before the scores are due. Already, Shimi, the Shimi, 14 years of age. The next person up represents the Soviet Union. She is competing with the hoop. This is Tatiana. Now we are ready for the young lady who was second in the standings. Second to the perfect Marina Lobach after two rotations by five hundredths of a point. This is Tatiana Druchinina. And Tatiana will be competing with the hoop. Five hundredths is such a small margin for error. Well, the door was opened when Lobach received a 9.9, .9, one tenth of a point difference. So after three rotations, there is some space. She needs 9.95 to overtake Lobach. Tatiana is capable of a 10 in any of the events. Tatiana's mother is a doctor. She's the world champion with the ribbon event. She has a sister in the sport as well. Very difficult move coming up. She jumps over the hoop and spins it. It's called a Shigurova spin. Chests are also required with hoop. Now we have seen Anna Kochniba receive a 9.95 for the hoop. She's right up there. Definitely capable of a 10 in this event. Very difficult toss to finish. Two rolls, and she catches in the finishing position. Precision. Leaving no margin for error at all. A precision performance from Tatiana Druchinina. Incidentally, there are six nations represented at this meet, so it's not possible to show you each routine. So here's a brief look at Japan's premier gymnast, Erika Akiyama. in Princeton, New Jersey. I'm Leander Riley along with Valerie Zimmering and these are the standings after three rotations. We still have some more gymnasts to perform. Lobach and Coach Neva are our leaders. Uh, Lobach with 29.9, Coach Neva with 29.65.
Then you see Munjibu with 29.35. Diane Simpson currently in fourth place with a 29.1. And Dakin Lister is in sixth place, tied with Susan Cushman of Canada. But this could all change. In fact, with our next competitor, I expect this to change because she is from Bulgaria and she is one of your favorite gymnasts, Valerie Zimmering, Albena Dimitrova. Especially with the hoop routine, she has an excellent tossing and catching with her feet. Let me interrupt right here. I've just been handed the score for Tatiana Druchinina. She received a 9.95. She is now tied for first place with Marina Lobach. We have two gymnasts with a 29.9. So that will move Diane Simpson down from fourth to fifth with a tie in there for first place. But right now it's Dimitrova on the floor. Right here's that foot toss, one of the ones I was talking about. Right into a roll, very difficult move. She's one of the up and coming Bulgarians. She hasn't had that much international experience, but in Bulgaria, their national competitions are as much pressure as any international meet. received a 9.5 for her rope and once again 9.95 for Tatiana Ducina as well. This is Albena Dimitrova of Bulgaria. I can see why you said don't count the Bulgarians out in the individual competition. They had a little trouble with some of their events earlier but she's coming right back. No problems in hoop. 15 years of age, 5 feet 5 inches tall, Albena Dimitrova. And now from the United States, Arina Rubenstein. We continue now with rope Arina currently sports a 19.05 total after two rotations. She's ready to compete with the rope apparatus. Irina's coached by Ala Svirsky. She was a 1984 Olympic coach. It was based in Los Angeles. And there's an interesting story behind the USA coaches. They are not from the USA. No, they are imported mostly from the Soviet Union. Sversky is. Um, uh, Irina Vidovitz. And Kathy Brim, I believe, is from Czechoslovakia. Yes, she so is. They all have an Eastern flair to them. We only need about 400 more. Interesting single release movement there. She let go of it and only had one end through two leaps and then caught it. Irina is from Los Angeles, California. At the Pan Am Games, she finished sixth in the all-around competition. At the Goodwill Games in Moscow, she finished 19th in the all-around. Here's her three-leap series. Difficult toss, leap, double roll, good catch. A little mistake there on the end, she meant for it all to wrap around her waist. Irina Rubenstein from the USA. Irina Rubenstein, our 17-year-old from the Los Angeles area, actually. Okay, here we have the last toss, very difficult leap, two rolls. She was a little short there. She had to pull in her last roll, and that's, I think, where the problem came in. All right, I've just been handed the score for Albena Dimitrova. She received a 9.8 for the hoop, so our standings show Lobach and Druchinina tied for first. Kochneva is in third. Dimitrova is tied with Munjeva for fourth place, with Diane Simpson still holding on to sixth.
And now we will continue here with Mariela Pachlieva. And Pachlieva could overtake Diane Simpson. Those two were neck and neck after two rotations. One tenth of a point separating them. Mariela uses electric bass for her accompaniment. <laughs> Irina Rubinstein. Catching a needle, that was a 180 degree split when she caught the hoop there. Okay, the score for Rubinstein, 9.45. Foot toss here, very difficult. Catch and jump through. That was a difficult foot toss. She hit it with her foot, did a forward roll, and caught it right where she wanted it. A beautiful performance by Mariela Pachalieva from Sofia, Bulgaria. Very quickly, let's bring you up to date on a couple of scores. Rubinstein received a 9.45 for her rope. Mariela Pachalieva received a 9.90 for her hoop routine. So Pachalieva has overtaken sixth place that was occupied by Diane Simpson. And now Jacqueline Pedrera of Brazil has entered the competition area. She will be competing with the hoop and she is the first Brazilian we have seen compete in this day's competition. What is the easiest apparatus for a beginning gymnast to pick up? I think the jump rope, because a lot of ki young kids skip rope, but also the hoop, they're familiar with the hula hoop. As a matter of fact, with the young kids that I work with, we start with hula hoops. Again, it goes back to what you're used to as a little, little person. In Europe, they use all of the implements in their physical education classes, and in this country, our culture has us exposed to hoop and rope. was always my favorite event. There's so much creativity, so many things you can do with the hoop. It does not look like a hula hoop right now. No. difficult move. She tossed and met the hoop as it was coming down and jumped through. A little bit of history about the sport. It used to be called modern rhythmic gymnastics and in 1981 they changed the title of the sport to rhythmic sportive gymnastics and that is how it is recognized internationally. And we'll be back with more rhythmic sportive gymnastics but first these messages. Three rotations very quickly. Let me add that Jacqueline Pedrera, who was our last competitor in the hoop event, received a 9.1, does not influence these particular standings. We have a two-way tie for first between Lobac and Ruchinina. They are both from the Soviet Union. Coach Neva occupies second place all by herself. And then we have two Bulgarian gymnasts occupying third place. And next after that is Pashlieva, who has overtaken Diane Simpson. Simpson now has slipped by five hundredths of a point in the standings. Now we are going to switch apparatus. You have seen the rope and the hoop. We are now going to change to the clubs and the ribbon. And Valerie Zimmering earlier prepared this demonstration for us and explanation of the apparatus. The most popular and expressive of the rhythmic events 
is the ribbon event. Familiar high tosses as well as large leaping combinations characterize this event and really lends itself to the gymnast's individual style and creativity. The most difficult of the rhythmic events is the club. With two pieces of apparatus, the gymnast shows small circles and crosses in milling movements as well as blind small juggling tosses caught behind the back. Also look for high tosses and a variety of tossing and catching. And this is a bird's eye view of the Jadwin Gymnasium. If you are just joining us in this telecast, we are at Princeton University for the Konica Cup and we are ready now for our fourth and final rotation. Jadwin Gymnasium, known for its practicing facilities for the New Jersey Mets, also home to all of Princeton's athletics, a magnificent facility, and right now, I believe for the first time, it is experiencing the sport of rhythmic gymnastics. Our co-leader, Marina Lobach, she is co-leading with the young lady from the Soviet Union, Druchinina, is now ready to enter the floor of competition. Her fourth and final apparatus will be the clubs event. And Valerie, is this the worst event to have last I think it is. Generally, you're nervous. She's done an excellent job up to now, but there's two pieces of apparatus. There's two clubs. She's tossing constantly through the routine, and it's very easy to make a mistake. Difficult toss, turning, leap, and a catch. Whenever you see the gymnast catch the club behind her back or toss two clubs at the same time, that adds extra difficulty to the element. They're supposed to catch the clubs at the narrow end. Not always. Depending on the type of catch they're looking for, sometimes they're catching two clubs in one hand, and then it's not so critical. That was a very difficult move. Two rolls, tossing at different times. Showing flexibility there, arching and catching behind her back. A beautiful routine by Marina Lobach. Currently a co-leader with 29.9 after three rotations, one-tenth of a point away from being perfect. We're going to break away. When we come back, we will have the score from Marina Lobach. But first, we're going to have a message from our sponsor. Welcome back to the Jadwin Gymnasium, where our next competitor is from the United States of America. Currently in seventh place in the standings, Diane Simpson. Diane Simpson's from Evanston, Illinois, and she attends Northwestern University, but many of the USA's rhythmic gymnasts are in the California area. Yes, the two strong places in the country are in the Chicago area and in the Los Angeles area. That's where Irina Vidovitz and uh, Alice Swirsky are. Sounds like volleyball. Those are two hotbeds for the sport of volleyball. very difficult for Diane, I know, to have clubs as her last event. It's been problems for her before. She's been working on getting her concentration together. The gymnast obviously does not have the choice on her order of competition. It's determined... It's determined by a draw, so you never know which event you're going to have first or last. Difficult toss under her leg to a catch. No problem there.
problem? A little stumble, not a big problem, but there, she had to move back to get it. She saved it. And had to hesitate before she took her beat on the floor. She's although, definitely happy about it because it could have no been... No major flaws. No major flaws, yes. Yeah, I'd have to say all the bobbles came on unimportant parts of the routine, but a bobble is a bobble. Diane Simpson concluding her performance with the clubs as we now look at Dakin Lister, who is going to compete with the ribbon. Now, this is the first ribbon performer we have seen this day. And this is the most recent apparatus that was added to rhythmic gymnastics, just added in the 70s. Instantly, it was the crowd's favorite. It's so expressive. What you're looking for is the pictures of the ribbon. There's small circles, small zigzag movements, and then large circles. The ribbon is 19 feet long? Over 19 feet, yes. That's Very a lot of ribbon. Very difficult to keep moving. And switching from hand to hand. I could see doing something with my right hand, but <laughs> it took me a while to get something going with my left hand. Difficult toss and catch there. No problem with that. She did something unique, too. She twirled the wand and with the ribbon in her hand. As long as the ribbon keeps moving, they are free to hold the center of the ribbon or fold it up. Just cannot stop through the routine. Your arm gets tired after a minute and a half. Now, oh, now it's tangled on her. For the number of seconds that it takes her to get untangled, she'll have a tenth deduction for each second. We've just been given a score for Diane Simpson, 9.75 for the club. She has to be happy with that score. And concluding her ribbon performance is Dakin Lister. When we come back, we will have her score plus more competitors with a ribbon and the club apparatus. There is a bit of controversy involving our first place standings here at the Konica Cup, and unfortunately it is involving the best gymnast. Marina Lobach is having her music timed. It is supposed to be between a minute and a minute and a half. Now, according to that timing of the tape, it met the standards. According to the original timing of the tape, it was a minute 32, which means there was a two-tenths deduction. They awarded her a score of 9.75. If the timing that you just saw holds up, then she will be upgraded to a 9.95. So very important what they determine with the timing of the tape. I think they will time it several times to make sure that they're accurate with their mathematics here because first place is definitely in jeopardy. Lobach currently tied with Ruchinina. They're both at 29.9, but Lobach with a 9.75 would definitely fall from the top. All right, we understand now that they have awarded her the two-tenths, so her score, and she was the first gymnast you saw with the clubs, is now 9.95, and she's definitely way up there in the standing still. Right now, you are looking at a young lady from, from the Soviet Union, Anna Kochneva. Now, Kochneva is currently in third place and could move into the top spot if she has a good performance here. Anna's strong with all the events. Toss under her leg there. At the World Championships, she was the gold medalist with the club's apparatus. This is not her strongest event. But most of the girls from the Eastern Bloc have no weak events. They're very consistent. If they have a weak event, they will concentrate on it. Very fluid. Yes. But I do agree that this is not as strong as her club routine, which was fantastic and very original. Coach Neva currently in third place, 29.65 after three rotations. A nice 
nice routine. 17 years of age, 5 feet 8 inches tall. She is from Moscow. Let's see one of the more exciting pieces of her routine here. She is purposely wrapped in the ribbon, and as long as that's on purpose, there is no deduction for it. Very high toss with a leap and a roll. That's two moves in one toss, so it's a superior. Our next competitor with gloves from Bulgaria, Julia Mungeva. And we will continue now with our competition. That was Anna Kochneva, and Julia Mungeva is ready to enter the arena. She is from Bulgaria. Currently, she is in a tie for fourth place, her all-around total being 29.35. Now, the stopwatch actually begins when the gymnast moves, not when the music starts. Exactly. When the gymnast moves, they'll start the timer. There are two people timing simultaneously for accuracy. She can have a routine between a minute and a minute and a half long. Double turns are very difficult. That's where all the ballet practice comes in. Line behind her back. She had a mistake there. That was a one tenth drop. She came back from it very quickly, so it is only one tenth of mistake. Julia Mungeva, and the score very quickly for Coach Neva was a 9.95. She is currently in second place. We'll be back, but first this. And this happens to be a look at the Princeton University marching band. We are back. The score for Julia Mungeva on the clubs was 9.8, giving her a total of 39.15, still in fourth place, technically third, but not everybody has competed yet in the top six positions. Right now, we're going to look at a young lady from Japan, Kaori Ishimi, 14 years of age, again, one of the younger competitors here at this meet. routine in rhythmic gymnastics. Is the choreography and the dance the first part and then you add the implements later or do you first say, well, this gymnast can do this superior element and that superior element and then you dance around that? Usually you work with the elements of difficulty first. Then you decide what style is the gymnast? Is she more towards the ballet style or very jazzy and then you put the dance in. The dance is very important but the elements of difficulty are the most important part of the routine. Very difficult toss. She tossed each of those clubs in a different plane. One was flat um, and now she had a problem there. That was a two-tenth deduction. Is a typical rhythmic gymnastics workout more involving dance, like ballet work at the bar, or more working with the implements? Well, on the U.S. team, most of us have an hour of ballet for warm-up every day, an hour of classical ballet. Then we take our equipment, work parts of the routine, then work with the pianists on full routines over and over and over again. <laughs> Repetition is your middle name. Kaori Oshimi from Japan. Leaving her performance with the clubs. 
Now an interesting story is developing with Tatiana Druchinina. She is tied with Marina Lobach for first place after two rotations, but Lobach received a 9.95 for her fourth and final event. Druchinina needs a perfect 10 if she wants the gold to herself. She needs a 9.95 if she wants to tie for the gold medal. Again, any of these girls are capable of a 10. Well, at the World Championships, this young lady that you're watching right now took the gold medal in the ribbon. So I'd have to say she's got her strong event going last. Regina has a brother who is a wrestler. And she is from Omsk. And a mistake there. That was a pretty large mistake. Two tenths. There goes the gold medal. This is the hardest part now to say, I have to keep going. And no matter what mistake I made, you know, she can't think about the gold medal right now. needs a 9-7 to tie for the silver, a 9-7-5 to take the silver. The deduction looked about two tenths to me, so without any other errors, she can still get the silver medal. So her teammates, Anna Kochneva and Marina Lobach, have put the pressure on Tatiana Druchinina. We'll take another look at her bobble. And maybe you can tell us why it happened. It looked to me like she had everything under control. She was preparing the toss, and part of the ribbon just got in the way of the stick, and that happens sometimes. She still tried to make the element, and that's where I think the problem happened. If she hadn't done that roll, she might have been able to get back a little quicker. We'll return. We'll have the score for Drutina now, as well as the rest of the standings. We still have some more competitors with our clubs and ribbons. Stay with us. Our coverage of the Konica Cup continues. Tatiana Druchinina received a 9.8. She is now in second place. Her teammate, Marina Lobach, has first, and Coach Niva is in third. So the Soviet Union is like they're one, two, and three. Not quite with the door closed, though, because our next gymnast, Albena Dimitrova of Bulgaria, has still yet to compete. Bulgarians have been very innovative in, innovative in their choice of music. Here she's using drums for accompaniment. And she's the only one we've seen use the drums for the ribbon. We did see drums with rope, but that's right, not with the ribbon event. Difficult toss coming up. This is called a double toss because she went right away into another toss. A little problem on picking it up there. Not a big deduction. Albania Dimitrova from Sofia, Bulgaria. Let's see that series of two tosses in a row. She's holding on to the end of the ribbon. Now she's going to catch not quite on the stick and throw it back under her leg. She had a little problem picking up the stick there. About a tenth deduction. And she needs almost a perfect score to hang on to fourth place. From Bulgaria, Mariela Pashilieva will be competing in the ribbon competition. Currently, she is in sixth place. In seventh place is Diane Simpson. 
She would need a perfect 10 to time Lumjeva for fifth place. That's not likely. So I would pretty much say it's safe to say she's got sixth place unless she has a major flaw. I've just been given the score for Albina Dimitrova. She received a 9.90. So Dimitrova has fourth place. And the Soviet Union looks so strong. One, two, and three. Mariela has some very difficult work under her body with a ribbon there. It's very hard not to get tangled. Nice balance there. That's a superior move when she holds that for two seconds. From what I've seen, Mariella tosses that ribbon higher than anyone else. It's about 45 feet in the air. Another toss here. See any problems with that routine? She had more tosses than any of the routines I'd seen before. She seemed to really keep it moving a lot more than some of the other ribbon routines that we've seen. There's those high tosses. That's got to be about 45 feet in the air. Very difficult to catch it right where you want it. Right away into another toss with the double roll. Well, that certainly limits the facilities that can accommodate a sport like rhythmic gymnastics because you do need a high ceiling. All right, that concludes our coverage of the individual competition. We'll recap the standings when we come back, and we will also have the group competition, kind of like synchronized swimming on dry land. Been verified, the Soviet Union has claimed first, second, and third place. Marina Lobach, 39.85, is our winner. The Bulgarians took places four, five, and six, with the USA pulling in seventh with Diane Simpson's 38.85. And from Canada, Mary Fusese's 38.50 was good enough for eighth position. Now we are going to move to the group competition. And if you have never seen group rhythmic gymnastics, we have prepared this explanation for you. Valerie Zimmering has explained the scoring and how the situation works when there are six gymnasts on the floor with apparatus in hand. In the group event, six girls perform together in a routine that lasts from two to two and a half minutes in length. Look for the group to perform simultaneously as the six or in groups of three or even in pairs. Also look for large and small exchanges of the apparatus throughout the routine. The Bulgarians are the best in the world at the group event. They're synchronized and showing here a very difficult exchange toss pattern. They'll be very tough to be here tonight. I think it is a beautiful combination that they have, the ball and the hoop. Yes, it is. And that's, so far, the first routine they competed was three girls with ball and three girls with hoop. What we're going to see now are six girls. Each girl has a ball. Sometimes one girl has two or three, but usually six girls, each with one ball. I would also assume that the combinations of the apparatus, since there are forehand implements involved, it seems to me that there are some combinations that are more aesthetic than others. For instance, we felt that ball and hoop were very, very pleasing to the eye, whereas I would think clubs and rope as a combination might be very difficult. The Gymnastics Federation, the International Gymnastics Federation, decides which event will be placed in the group routine every other year. And I think they, they think about that, too, because it, some events just don't go well together. All right, the Bulgarian team is standing in the wings. We saw them as they were getting ready to enter. Let's talk very quickly about the ball. They will have six of them out there. The ball is actually smaller than a volleyball. Its texture is plastic rubber-like, and it is really quite light. 
It bounces, so it's one of the characteristics that you'll see in the group routine as well as in individual ball routines are bouncing moves, tossing moves, and because it's round, rolling across the body and on the floor. The ladies that you are seeing in this group routine are not in the individual competition. For this particular Konica Cup, they are performing only as a group and have been practicing for this meet as such. And in this country, how does that process take place? How is a group gymnast chosen as, as opposed to, let's say, an individual? Certain girls work better in a group. It's the problem that we're having in the United States is getting girls that live in the same city. Right now, our group is from all over the country. They do not get to train together all year long like these girls from Sofia do. Uh, these are the best girls in the world. They're bringing a score of 19.90. They've competed once. They are our leaders. The camera up, ahead, up above lets you see the kinds of form formations that the girls are doing. They have to constantly change, show six to eight formations in each routine. These, they'll show much more than eight, though. Some of the work simultaneous here. They're moving exactly together. Very difficult turns to complete. Right? Beautifully synchronized. Beautifully. Bulgaria with a total national population of about 4 million people. Another perfect finish there on that turn. And this kind of precision only comes with, as you say, lots of, lots of practice. Changing into pairs work here. Difficult toss and a fish flop kind of movement over the ball. Very difficult. Large tossing here. Large exchanges all the way across the mat are also required. They caught that behind their head there. Very difficult. Wow. Crowd like that. They truly make you forget that this is competition. This is entertaining. Very entertaining. They have a very difficult finish here. Double roll, oh, catch, oh, wow. and the end. Beautiful routine for the team from Bulgaria. Lydia Bocheva, Avelina Dechkova, Kamilia Dunavska, Elena Lazarova, Tanya Starella, Majia Kaskova, and Petya Kochlakova. Let's go back and look at some of the more difficult tossing parts in the routine. This is a very complicated toss. The girls will toss behind them and roll over the ball that's rolling on the floor. One of their superior moves in the routine. And that's only the Nothing like starting off with the best. They brought in a score of 19.9. Be added to the score that they'll receive for that performance. And we'll be back with that number, but now this. The score for the team from Bulgaria, they received a perfect 10 for composition, a perfect 10 for execution, 20. Their score when combined with yesterday's total, their combined total is now 39.90. And now we are looking backstage to the team from the Soviet Union. They were just .15 behind Bulgaria in the individual competition. The Soviet Union overcame some obstacles and swept one, two, three. Let's see if they can overtake the Bulgarian team in the group competition. The mat upon which they are performing is simply carpeting. The white tape border is for the individual performance. That's 40 by 40. The group gets actually 42 by 42, so they get to move as far out as the dark gray area.
This routine is a more typically Soviet style than their hoop and ball routine was. balance move here. That's where you can see the difference in the quality of gymnasts between the countries. Not only the quality, but the depth. Each girl was picture perfect on that. the changing formations, They're constantly changing into different lines, different patterns. Large tossing part here, very difficult. As soon as they get into that line, they fix it very quickly if there's anyone out of step. Another toss exchange. Mm. Now they had to move out of line to catch it. That is a little execution deduction. This is interesting. We have five girls moving simultaneously and one girl performing solo in the corner. It almost reminds you of a ballet. It is similar. They really have to watch each other throughout the whole routine even when they're not facing each other they need to know where that girl is behind them if they want to stay in line nice rolling underneath yes. five girls beautiful beautiful performance by Iana Dimitrenko, Tatiana Drichinina, Anna Kochniva, Erika Masolchatsu Ludmila Pitchak, Anastasia Popova, and Elena Zolotero. Nineteen point seven five was the score that they received for their first performance. That was when they had three hoops and three balls. Unfortunately, there's just no way they can catch Bulgaria with a 19.9 and a perfect 20. Even if the Soviet Union were to get a perfect 20, the best they could hope for is a silver medal with a 39.75 total. But as you pointed out, Valerie, there were some mistakes in the performance and they should not receive a perfect 20. And as the team from Japan enters the floor of competition, we've just been handed the score for the Soviet Union group and they did get a perfect 20. Still, they will only get the silver medal at this juncture with a 39.75 total. But I'm very surprised at that because I, I saw those errors as well. They were not exactly in line if you compare it to the Bulgarian group. I'm yes. surprised with that perfect 20. Now, here's a dynamic group. I really enjoyed them earlier when they competed at the ball and hoop combination. Team from Japan, 1945. That's their total coming in to this rotation. And this routine is just as strong as their hoop and ball routine. They have a very difficult beginning toss here. They all catch underneath their legs. Not a problem with that. Strong beginning. When you have six girls performing such a difficult move, it's very hard to be in sync. They have to work that over and over again.
Now here's an interesting split, four and two. We've seen five and one with the Soviet Union. Now they're in back in six again. It's important to keep changing your pattern. And they do that a lot. Very difficult tossing series there. Another large toss here. From behind the back. When the toss is performed back to back, that's a superior element. And that was very exciting. They caught the ball. We call that belly catching in softball, and that's what it was. The three of them locked arms and put their tummies together and caught it. Again, we're seeing great transitions out of the Japanese team. I love the choreography. They're constantly moving through lines into other positions, which is not what you see all the time with the other countries. Well, it's contrasted to the um, Soviet Union. Very dramatic, very balletic, and this is go, go, go. I like the way they have small exchanges like that one, not just large tosses, small juggling movement. Difficult double roll. Excellent routine. Crowd likes it. I think they might win on the applause meter. I don't know about with the judges. <laughs> Look at some of the more difficult exchanges back to back tossing. Those are about 40 feet in the air. Very hard to catch. One girl did move out of line. It's difficult to tell if the judges could see that. There's that. The finish of their routine. Simultaneous. Double rolls. All those balls came down at the same time. A strong finish for the team from Japan. Rika Hashima, Yaoi Kawasaki, Rumiko Koma, Yoshiko Shoji, Yoko Sugiyama, Michiko Takara, Yumi Yogawawa, and Miho Yoshida. Twenty point six nineteen point six zero is their total. They add that to yesterday's nineteen forty five and they're a little bit off the money. 39.05. Now the USA has stepped onto the floor exercise map. <laughs> Kathy Brim, who is the coach of the group competitors, is in Eugene, Oregon. And she's only had about three weeks to work with this group. Again, this comes back to the problem in the USA where our gymnasts don't live all together and it's hard to get them together to compete like this. And it is a big problem because the girls, not only don't they live in the same cities, but they have, we have very different styles in our team. Whereas if you saw the Sylvia team when they held their leg, every leg was the same length. All the girls were the same height. We don't have that novelty here yet. They just completed one of their superior parts of their routine. Very nicely done. Another exchange here. And you can see the timing is not the same as, for instance, with the Soviet Union or Bulgaria, where all tosses were the same height and came out at the same time. That's where you see the difference when the girls train together for a year. Small mistake there. They do work well together when they have their simultaneous movements. It's the difficulty that really isn't comparable to, let's say, the Russian or the Bulgarian team. Another difficult exchange here behind the back. We had a problem with it.
another Back large coffee. exchange. No problem with that. And a circle toss with the chest roll. Very difficult. Nice finish. USA in fifth place after the first performance. Let's see if they can gain some ground and move up to fourth, possibly even third. We'll be back with a recap, but first we're going to have a word from our sponsors. Once again, let's recap the results here from the Konica Cup competition. In the individual qualifications, Marina Lobach of the Soviet Union claimed the gold, as did her teammate Turchinina for the silver, and Anna Kochneva took the bronze. It was a Soviet sweep in the individual effort. In the group competition, Bulgaria took top honors with a 39.90 total. The Soviet Union claimed the silver, while the team from Japan took the bronze. Now, there is a result that is unique to the Kanaka Cup in that they took the top all-around scores, the top three scores, and combined it with the group score to come up with the Kanaka Cup overall winner. So not only did the Soviet Union have the best overall individual and team, they will win the Kanaka Cup for the combination. Bulgaria very close, finishing second, but it was the Soviet Union who wins the 1987 Kanaka Cup. Best hopes from the USA individually came from one Diane Simpson, who is standing by now with our Valerie Zimmering. Diane, first of all, I want to say congratulations. You did an excellent job, and I wanted to ask you about your performance, how you felt about it here today. Well, I was happy that I was very consistent, and I didn't drop. I made some minor mistakes, but I didn't have any big mistakes, and I th thought what I did that was wrong, I covered up very well, so I was pretty happy with my results here today. I also wanted to ask you, we're only a year away from the Olympic Games, and what are you going to do to prepare yourself for 88? Well, I'm going to an Invitational in November in London, and then I will be going to nationals and some international competitions throughout the year, and I'll, I'll be going to the Olympic trials and hopefully the Olympics in 1988. Well, good luck with this year, and we'll all be rooting for you. Thank you. Leandra? Thank you, Valerie, and thank you, Diane Simpson. I think we really have to tip our hats to the Conoco Corporation, who provided not only copying and photography services, but they were also the underwriters of this meet. And as sponsors, we hope that this event becomes a long-standing tradition in the sport of women's rhythmic gymnastics. The Conoco Cup has been brought to you by the Conoco Corporation, leading the world in color film, cameras, videotape, and copiers. For Valerie Zimmering, I'm Leander Raleigh. So long, everyone, from Princeton, New Jersey, and congratulations to the Soviet Union, winners of the Kanaka Cup.